2018 appointments as follows, and then I'm going to read quite a list. An appointment of Eric. Uh, somebody else can make the motion. I move to adopt the 2018 appointments as follows. You going to read them now? Yeah. Mm -hmm. the, yes. No. Thanks. Yeah, you can cut <laughs> that one quick, did you? <coughs> appointment of Erica as township secretary and township manager. Reappointment of Danielle Hewitt as township treasurer. 
appointment of George Chiners uh, uh, to the Planning Commission for a full year term, expire 12-31-2021. Appointment of Ken Wittick and Tommy Ticinos to the Environmental Advisory Board, both for a three-year term to expire 12-31-2020. Reappointment of Steve Basil to the Sustainability Committee for a three-year term to expire 12-31-2020. Hey, could you pull the microphone closer to you? Turn it off the wrong way. Um, where is it? Steve Basil. Steve, okay. Appointment of uh, Von Brownlee to the Sustainability Committee to fill an unexpired term to set to expire 12-31-2018. Appointment of Gail Ripple to the Sustainability Committee to fill an unexpired term to expire 12-31-2019. Appointment of Barb Van Horn to the Sustainability Committee to fill a three-year term to expire 12-31-2020. Appointment of Barb Rebels to the Sustainability Committee to fill a three-year term to expire 12-31-2020. The appointment of Township Solicitor, Hamburg, Rubin, Mullen, Maxwell, and Lupin. Zoning Officer, Tracy Franny, Civil <coughs> Engineering Group. Building Code Inspector, Frank Newhams of Cedarville Engineering Group. Tax Collectors, Berkheimer Associates and Keystone Collection Group. Tax Hearing Officers, Burt Power Associates and Keystone Collections Group, Engineer Brian Karaski, Cedarville uh, Engineering Group, Traffic Engineer Ludo Associates, Emergency Management Director James Gooding, Emergency Management Board Liaison Mike Schneider, Depositories, DNB First, Pliggett, U.S. Bank, WSFS, bb &T. Voting delegate to the State Commission, uh, Convention, Erica Vadoff, Vacancy Board Chairman, Francis Ellis, Open Records Officer, Erica Vadoff, Northern Federation Representatives Man Manager, Eric Vadoff, Bernie Curtis is the Board Supervisor Representative, Phoenixville Regional Planning Committee Member, John Jacobs Voting Member, Mike Schneider, all Voting Member, Manager Eric Badoff, George Chinos, Planning Commission Member. Agricultural Security Board appointments for one year term to expire December 31st, 2018. Kenneth Miller, Thomas Rodinsky, Wheeler Amon, Harry Emery, Raymond Nordstrom. Nestor. Nestor. Is there a second? Did we already get a second? Yes. No. Yep. Is there a second? No? Then I'll second. Any comments from New York? Yes. There seem to be some committees missing. Say that again? Appointments to Parks and Rec, Open Space, Zoning Hearing Board, things like that. No. Um, just to address that, uh, for Open Space, uh, that that committee appointment is a member, would be a member of the Planning Commission. Um, so, in discussing with the board, I think one of the recommendations would be to offer the Planning Commission that opportunity uh, to make that recommendation. Um, in addressing Parks and Rec, there are new, new appointments. Uh, with the con uh, reducing the size of the commission from nine to seven, everybody is at in their terms. Uh, and as far as setting hearing board, that will be taken care of by a separate resolution, and that's one of the requirements. Thank you. Um, Yes, sir. To follow up on that, um, <coughs> the Planning Commission could also provide recommendations as a liaison to things like the <coughs> next region. No. But not this year. Apparently not. Okay. Um, George was listed for that. Mm -hmm. George yes. was listed for that. Right. Okay. That's my, really my question. But I got his answer. Any other questions from the audience? Seeing none, I'll call for a vote. All those in favor? Aye. Bernie, was that a yes or no? No. Okay. Got to be clear so we, she can record it. Next item is uh, item number six, 2018 meeting date schedule. A motion to adopt and approve the 2018 regular township meeting schedule as follows. Do you want me to read this? So moved. Okay. So. 
Board of Supervisors meetings will be held on the first and third Monday of every month at 7 p.m. If such meeting falls on a holiday, then the meeting shall be held the following day. The dates are January 2nd, January 15th, February 5th, February 20th, March 5th, March 19th, April 2nd, April 19th, um, April 16th, May 7th, May 21st, June 4th, June 18th, July 2nd, July 16th, August 6th, August 20th, September 4th, September 17th, October 1st, October 15th, November 5th, uh, November 19th, December 3rd, December 17th. Um, all meetings are in, all meetings will start at 7 o'clock. Environmental Advisory Council the first Wednesday, will meet first Wednesday of the month at 5.30. Historic Resource Com Subcommittee the fourth month will meet on the fourth Monday of the month at 6.30. The Open Space Advisory Board will meet the fourth Tuesday of the month at 5 p.m. Parks and Recreation Commission will meet the first Wednesday of the month at 7.30 p.m. The Planning Commission regular meeting will meet the third Thursday of the month at 7.30 and workshop the second Thursday of the month at 7.30. The Sustainability Committee will meet the third Tuesday of the month at 7.30 and the workshop the second Tuesday of the month at 7.30. Any questions from the audience? Sarah. Last year, um, I pointed out that you were having a supervisor's meeting on a federal holiday, the Martin Luther King holiday and you said you would consider moving it in 2018 so you were not having that conflict. I think I'd like to hear what your consideration, how you came to the conclusion to not change that date. We didn't discuss that. Nobody had a discussion. We don't even know what date Martin Luther King's birthday is. Did we put the meeting the date? The third on? Monday yes. of the month. We are open for business that day, though. We're not closed not as far as the... Well, it's a federal uh, holiday, and it's an yeah. important federal holiday to many people. So well, that's why I, I mentioned that last year. That's I'm going point. to mention it again this year. May, may it please get into the minutes. Let's deal with it right now. Bernie or Mike, do you have an opinion on that? I would suggest that we move it for the sake of the federal holiday. Mike? It doesn't bother me. Okay, we can revise it to the to the, uh, to the 20th. It has to be advertised just um, to the next soon. day, the 16th. Oh, what? Uh, oh, okay. Two weeks from today. Okay. So, so what's right, that date? Tuesday, January 16th. <laughs> Thank you. I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Tuesday, January 16th. Tuesday, January 16th, at 7 p.m. Yeah. Rob, I'm just going to amend that motion to reflect instead of January 15th, it'll be January 16th. Yeah. We don't need to do a second on that. I would get a second on the amendment. Second. Yeah. Any other? One quick one. The township website says that the planning commission meeting on the 18th of January will be held at 7 p.m. So I was sort of expecting you to change the time, but you didn't. So I think the website needs to be corrected. We got that error. So noted. Thank you. There was a hand. Brian. This year we had a number of issues with the, when we had an election on Tuesday following the Board of Supervisors meeting with the election workers having to set up after the Board of Supervisors meeting, which means if they're late here late, to get here early to go and accomplish, you know, be, fix people up for uh, voting on Tuesday and I brought this up I think two years ago asking the same question has any consideration been given to you know changing a date so that we don't step on uh, you know the day right before a, uh, an election I personally was here and I thought it went swimmingly well um, the, the a number of volunteers converted the room did you have any problems with it? and we were open up um, for business you know, well, the work. reason I say that is I've had people tell me that, you know, it gave them some fits. And say I've had some experience with setting up at the other location, and it, it not necessarily real short. Well, was it a long setup this year? I know the year prior year it wasn't a bad, but how long did our meeting go this year? Well, it depends how long our meetings go. That's true. Yeah, and that's really the issue. Um, does anybody remember how long it took? 
to set up after our meeting? There or was what time meeting, was? I think it may have been right before the general election where the meeting went fairly long. And I know I went up to the firehouse and I don't think I got out there till about 10 or 11 o'clock at night. Maybe I later. was here until it was done and, and it was converted so quickly I can't imagine it was a problem. So I don't know how you gentlemen feel. Um, okay. But I just don't think it's a... Well, we didn't think it was a problem last year when we voted to do it on that day. I think there was a hand up that one of the addresses. <laughs> I'm sorry. I was just going to say it was a very long meeting before the general election and we were out within an hour. And if you would move the meeting, then you, move, you can't move it to the next day because that's the, that's the goal. So you're actually moving in three days. That's crazy. So that'll give us a reason to make a note of that to have a short meeting that day. <laughs> Very short. Sure. Any other comments? Seeing none, then I'll call for a vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Are we ready to go to work, Bernie? I am. Okay, read number seven, bottom of page two. Motion to approve and accept the amount of the treasurer's bond amount of $2 million. Second. Uh, any comments from the audience? <coughs> Seeing now, I'll call for a vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Bernie, how about eight? Motion to adopt resolution 1-2018, establishing the area, responsi area of responsibility for police, fire, rescue, and ambulance. Is there a second? Second. Rob, well, we don't have to read the resolution on that, do we? No. Okay. Um, any comments from the audience on what this is? <clears throat> this has to be done every year. It just delineates what fire company and the <coughs> course service our area. So, I move. Motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Mm -hmm. um, but you're on a roll, Bernie. All right. right. Motion to adopt resolution 2-2018, establishing the township manager's compensation at $108,710.08 per annum. Is there a second? Second. Any comments from the audience? Second. Seeing none, I'll call for a vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, one more All right. Rate, rate of mileage reimbursement. Uh, motion that the township approve resolution 3 2018 in the form presented establishing the mileage reimbursement at 54.5 cents per mile following the federal guidelines for 2018. Second. Any comments from the audience? See now, I'll call for a vote. All Aye. those in favor? Aye. Wait until I call for the vote. Um, you're up again, Mike. Number 11, that'll teach you. Okay. Uh, appointment of the certified public accountant. Motion that the township approve resolution 4 2018 in the form presented appointing Barbara Payne Thornton and Company of uh, 202 Bancroft Building, <coughs> 411 Silversdale, I mean Silverside Road, Wilmington, Delaware. Affirm the certified public accountant to replace the elected auditors in accordance with section 917 of the second class township code. Or second. Second. Any comments from the audience? Seeing none, I'll call for a vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion to. I can do that, right? Can just sure, go ahead. <laughs> Motion to adopt resolution 5 2018. <coughs> adopt West Vincent fee schedule for 2018 in the form submitted to the township. Board of Supervisors at the reorganization meeting, meeting consisting of seven pages, including sections for residential new construction, commercial new construction, general permits, fire code, official fees, board of appeals fees, board of supervisor fees, township permit materials, miscellaneous fees, subdivision land development fees, engineering legal fees, land planner and traffic engineer fees, stormwater ordinance management fees, with an electrical fee schedule attached to the total pages. Second. I'll second that motion. I have a question now. Sure, go ahead. <clears throat> Do any of the fees radically change from the previous year? That's a good point. One did, I believe. Uh, the overtime rate uh, for the police, uh, <laughs> we charge for uh, events or that sort of thing. When we looked at it, uh, it had not been changed several years, so it's been changed from $65 to $100 an hour. And the commercial fees changed, but that changed that earlier. That changed a few yes. months ago. Was yeah, nothing radical. So nothing changed. We did update the fee schedule a couple months ago, mm -hmm. but that's not included. That, uh, it is included, so there's Correct. no additional change. Correct. That one. Thank you. 
Any comments from the audience? Seeing that, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, you want to do the 13 way? Motion to adopt resolution 6 2018, appointment of Kenneth Brain to the zoning hearing board for a five year term to expire 12 31 2022. Is there a second? I'll second. Any comments from the audience? And yes, that sir. was the only vacancy? Yes. So you're, so you're reappointing him? Yes. Any other comments? Seeing none, we'll call for a vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 So I'm, a, I'm an Aye. alternate, Aye. and I'll be off that zoning hearing board if, to become an auditor. I can't serve on the zoning hearing board, so you might have to appoint another, another alternate. Okay. You will. I'm All looking right. for the day, John, when we can actually get to a reorganization meeting without screwing up. No, but we're, we're fine. If you just let me know about that, um, you know, I, I, we need to have that information in advance. So if you had shared that previously, then please forward that along to me at this point. Thank you. Thanks, John. Yes, sir. I, I did have a question about the auditor. Shall I save it for the end of all these resolutions? Go for it now. Okay. So I saw that the meeting is tomorrow night at 5 o'clock, but I was trying to find some place where there was a list of who the current elected auditors are. I could not find it on the website because I think George Dolcinos also has to dis, um, resign as auditor if he wants to be appointed to Planning Commission and PRPC liaison. Here it so, comes. <laughs> So I think that means you have several vacancies. And I'm very surprised you weren't aware of that since you knew that John had been elected and you knew you were going to appoint George. Just handed to the resignation he, Well, did you alert him? That clearly he knew he had to make the choice. You knew he had to make the choice. We discussed it. But yeah. i got to tell you, I probably forgot about it, but I knew it was being taken care of. So you've got an auditor's meeting tomorrow with one auditor. Congratulations. Right, Erica's going to we'll figure it out. out. Are you going to get, yes. if you'd like to appoint some other people tonight, I could. They can't do it. They have to be elected. Wouldn't they have to be elected? Could be, but what are you going to do? We'll figure it out tomorrow. <laughs> Rob and I Rob. Or Hector. George. Yes. Why is John not an auditor? Oh, John is. I'm sorry, John. Yeah, you're on. I, can, I, don't want to be, I can't be sworn in until the, uh, the zoning hearing board requested I not be sworn in until the end of the current hearing. I'm an alternate already, and they're short of getting people to serve, and they need a contingent to finish the current hearing. So I'm not going to get sworn in until I'm off that until that hearing's over. Gotcha. Okay. okay. All right. So we'll figure it out tomorrow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Rob, can you stay a little late and work with him? You got it. Thank you. Thanks, John. If the meeting is not held tomorrow, would you please post it and Certainly. send out the flash email? Yes. Any sure. other? Thank you. That was just an off, that was an off the motion thing. Yes. I just heard a comment that if you weren't going to have the auditor's meeting tomorrow to notify, but I do believe there are some requirements, time requirements that it has to happen. I'm not sure, but We'll look into all that. Yes, when we talk, we know there's Okay, there's well, you know, as a resident, we're just concerned and interested. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? Next, continuing <coughs> on. Um, do we have to end a meeting, Rob, and start a new new meeting? You can roll in for it. Okay, that ends the reorganization part of this meeting. And now we're going into a regular board meeting. And I move to approve the minutes of December 18th, 2017. I believe I need to abstain because I wasn't a supervisor for that meeting. Then I'll second. Any comments from the audience? Was this advertised as a regular board meeting? Can you can you have a board meeting if you don't advertise? It? Yeah, I believe it was advertised at yeah. the announced um, meetings. I mean, you can advertise a reorganization meeting, maybe the, not the, as a regular the, board meeting. Double check that if it's not, we'll have to redo all this second part. Mm -hmm. We've conducted business before on. Well, we did last year. Yeah. We've done this. Yeah. But was it advertised as a regular meeting? That's John's. That's the point. 
I'm not sure if it was advertised as a regular meeting. Does it have to be? It's on the website. I'm not sure. You got your work cut out for you. Yeah, I think we're fine with it. I suspect we are too. But is there any way to shoot up? John, could we quickly look it up? I do believe that I saw it in the the Pennsylvania Public Notices website that it you advertised it both. You had an advertisement for the reorg. And you also had an advertisement as a regular meeting, I believe. But because I didn't do it, Brian, I don't know whether it was actually mentioned as a right. regular meeting. So quick point point. No, I'm saying I looked at what I looked at shows the newspaper advertisements, and I believe there was one for both of them. I could be wrong, but I think you're okay. Yeah, well, I think we should find out because we could just end the meeting now and not have a regular meeting until so next. Reason? How would we find out right now? Okay. Take, it up. take a brief recess. Okay. We're going to take a brief. Brian will look it up for you. Okay. What's that, the Mercury? Was that Normally that's where that's the advertising. Mercury, Erica. Yeah, I have to it's 
seeing Bernie, it's seeing Bernie take a drink, baby, so thirsty. <laughs> <laughs> so what did you get? Did, did you determine what you said? We're good, we're good. Okay. I have one. way out. <laughs> okay, so where are we? We have a motion and a second? Yep. Um, on, on which I... The number is 14, it was approved with the minutes. 14. <coughs> one last chance. Is there any comments on the minutes? Seeing no, I'll call for a vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And, and Bernie is abstaining. I move that the bill is listed. Uh, no, never mind. You're doing that. Uh, we need a motion. Tonight's bill's list is $35,896.07. There's no reimbursable bill list, and there's no substitute <coughs> utility bill list. So the total. We're going to vote on tonight's thirty-five thousand eight hundred ninety-six dollars and seven cents. I move to approve the bills list in the total amount of thirty-five thousand eight hundred ninety-six dollars and seven cents. I'll second. Sarah. No bills from Cedarville Engineering. Merry Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> they actually want a bill once a month. Yeah, they're going to next week. And no sewage maintenance or anything because it's out of your hands now. It would no, be out of our hands. This is no legal bills. I, I feel like you just slid all those costs into this year because we've had them on every bills list so far. Point at Eric. Don't point at Bernie. No, I'm pointing at Erica. <laughs> yeah, um, this is catching up on miscellaneous bills. We're going to have a, a pretty extensive bills list in the next period. So. Exactly my point. Yeah. So bills, you've got bills that aren't on here, or that they've just not billed you for not currently. this period of time. Correct, the period of time. So they're not catching up. This is just the few bills. We typically have not for the reorganization meetings for the past few years. <coughs> I asked about this, had had a bills list. Oh. This is just a, a short bills okay. list to clean up something. That's really what it is. The ones that must be paid. Yeah. All right. Oz Property <coughs> Builder Snow Removal. What was that for? There was a oh, uh, weather event in mid-December. There was some salting that was done to help supplement that. There, they were the only bidder on the snow removal contract. They're an hourly um, contractor mm -hmm. that we bring in when we need them. Yeah. Well, right. I do have a question. Okay. That. I mean, it was a very small <coughs> snowstorm, wasn't it? Um, the road yeah. crew doesn't handle that? They do. They do. And they can the help. You know, I, uh, we do the best we can, and when they need help, they, Oz is there to help supplement. <coughs> So yeah, I'm just curious how the HSA's contributions are calculated, and how many people, is that $16,000? Is that comprising? Um, I can provide that information. I can follow up with you, Chuck. That'd be all right. I have a do few you, people. I just don't want do to share all their. I do. I think it's six. Yeah. And so. it's a one-time lump sum. Yes. Mm -hmm. There's no monthly contributions there. There's after. not. No. Do you still need more information on that? Yeah. Is it? Does it uh, cover the entire deductible? Uh no. No. Any other comments? Seeing none, I'll call for a vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, we're up to what, 16? Need a motion for, to approve the I extension? to approve the extension request for 16 years LLC subdivision to May 7, 2018. No second. Any comments from the audience? Seeing none, I'll call for a vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 I move to approve the extension request for BGK. One trust subdivision to February 28, 2018. I need a second. I'll second with a question. Sure, what's your question? I don't remember what that is the BGK. Oh, Vince Kling Trust. Vince Kling Trust. Oh, yeah. It's always a good question. I just looked at it myself. Oh, you can't read the handwriting on that one. Yeah, yeah, you will have to do that. Any comments from the audience? Seeing none, a call for vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Mm -hmm. One more. A motion to approve the extension request for the white subdivision to February 20, 2018. I'll second. Any comments from the audience? 
Do not call for a vote. All those in favor? Aye. Motion to approve the extension request for the Maxwell subdivision to June 1st, 2018. I'll second. Any comments from the audience? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I move to adopt resolution 7 2018, opposition to HB 1620. I'll second the motion. Thank you. Rob, I read this. If it's, do we have to vote on this tonight? I think this thing warrants. So basically, what this is is a bill currently pending before the state legislature that would greatly restrict what a municipality can do with respect to siting wireless telecommunication facilities. Uh, currently, uh, townships can limit where these things can be placed through zoning. Uh, that would really limit basically what the township can do in the restricted. But, I mean, I did some research on the internet that the, it made me think of one, one way, just there's a lot to this, and a lot of it is futuristic stuff to a non-computer guy like myself. Uh -huh. But these wireless companies could put something at, I'll call on you a second, sorry, something as small as a, a radio and something as large as a, as a suitcase on, a, on an existing pole without our zoning approval if this law passes. Right? Um, it depends. It's a little more nuanced than that, but basically. It gives them more rights. Yeah, it, it gives them more rights. It's it, more about what it restricts what the township can do. Currently, under the Broadband Qualification Act and the Wireless uh, Communications Act, we, can, we have a little bit more control of the zone. So, <coughs> voting on this, would it give us more control than? All this is doing is basically saying to the state reps that you oppose this bill. It's not actually taking any township action with respect to the siting of the facilities. Yeah, it gives us no legal standing. We're just... Are you familiar with it? Are you guys... Okay, good. Okay. Then I am. Sorry. Good. Um, some of them are as large as, like, 55-gallon drums that they could put on the existing poles and stuff. But they also, the DAS permits, if you were... We are... You, you already have your council working on a draft ordinance change to help us control the non-cellular towers. Um, there's also federal law that maintains that they must, that we need to make sure our ordinance repeats it, that they cannot be seen from historic resources, which includes our Highland District. So it's a, it's a little tricky, and so not having the state open it up is a good thing. Thank you very much. So, no, um, just <coughs> we're giving our state bread the thumbs down on this. Correct. Correct. Okay. Any other comments from the audience? Seeing none, I'll call for a vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I move to approve the township manager severance agreement as drafted. I'll second the motion. <coughs> Any comments from the audience? Sarah. Is, how many, is this a one-year agreement again, or yeah, could you, would you consider making it longer? I understand. Last year was a one-year agreement. Why can't you make it a two- or three-year agreement? I personally actually forgot about it until two days ago. But that wouldn't stop you from making it Gentlemen, two. Gentlemen, what's your pleasure? Or three. I would never go to three. i go to Bernie? Um, I don't like the current document. I think it needs to be adjusted, uh, so I would only go for one for that reason. In the future, it needs to be changed. Okay. It's unacceptable language. Okay. What's the unacceptable language, and should it just be voted yeah. down completely tonight? Can you define what uh, moral turpitude is? <laughs> no, if we I could, I wouldn't be sitting next to you. And yeah. <laughs> <laughs> any, any eagle with worth his salt would not have put that language in. So it really needs to be adjusted. Okay. Then I would recommend you fix it before you put it in place. Rob, what do you think on that? Uh, we can amend it, but um, uh, I wouldn't recommend amending it right now. But I'll just take another look at it. But, well, my position was to let it fly for this year, but then amend it so that next year we take that language out. Okay. Eric, will you put that on your to-do list with Bernie? 
Sure. Avoid sure. moral turpitude for this year. <laughs> <laughs> You're lucky. I know. All those in favor? Uh, well, I apologize. John, is this an employment agreement or a severance agreement? Or severance. Both? And it's a one year term? Correct. So, in severance, uh, the employee would receive a one year salary? No. No, no, no. It's yeah. a period of time. It's, it's, so, it's, it's, a, it's in effect for one year. Okay, so <coughs> the agreement is one year term. <coughs> And uh, is there some place we can look at this? Yeah. I don't know if it's on. I mean, can we put it on the website? And is it appropriate? What's that? Is it appropriate? Well, we thought so. What, the, the terms? I mean, for the comparative townships off extend these same types of agreements. I mean, have we done any of that research? Yes, we did. Yes. But it, yes. we did it two minutes under the second five towns. I don't know if it can be made public under yeah. right, right. to do personnel and employment. But can we can we mention the terms? Can we mention some of the terms? <coughs> can you tell us the essence or you cannot tell us the essence of the stream? I mean, is there a one week severance pay or can, uh, is, can, can we state that generally about it? But can't give about specifics. Um, yeah, there's so much per year. How's that? There's per year of employment, you get X amount of severance. X amount. What is X? A week? Well, a month? I'm hardly not allowed yes. to say what X is. <laughs> what? Well, you said a couple things and I said yes. Okay. <laughs> we really are hand tied with personnel issues. I, would, um, I can't believe it. Yeah, I wouldn't. You want to ask them? Yeah, I can't. I can't I, I, we can't go into the details. Just and it accumulates and, and uh, maxes out at a certain yes. max. Yes, yeah, sir. John, the uh, police chief has his posted as to what he's allowed. Why would this be not public? I don't know. I can look into it and see if we can post it, but at this time I would recommend I mean, the not. police chief is also employed by the township. Mm -hmm. Right. This is public. His whole well, contract. Nice. I would agree with it. Police chief in the. Contracts that the board is allowed to enter into, the township is allowed to enter into with the police chief is different under the second class township code. Certain provisions that specifically address contracts for, with the manager. So okay. I have to look into it and maybe we'll post it. Right, we're, this time over. What we're going to do is investigate it. I have no problems saying it to I almost said it like three times. Um, but we're being advised yeah. one thing so by our council, so we have to take that advice. So if we get an answer tomorrow and it's allowed to be put on the we're website, on okay. Otherwise, that's the question we get next week or two weeks. Yes. Yes, sir. Yeah, uh, Jim Berkey. Um, you know, Tammy's been serving us for a lot of years loyally, <coughs> and uh, I think this uh, dismissal to many of us seems to be very arbitrary and capricious. Say and, that again, uh, please. Hmm? I'm saying I missed that. I, I think that her dismissal to many of us seems very arbitrary and capricious. Excuse me. Okay. We're, you're talking about an employee. We're not even there. You're we're, we're, there's a motion on the floor about a, a, a severance agreement. Yes. Yes, but not with anybody that's been terminated. So okay. you'll have to bring that up at the end of the meeting under non-agenda items. All right. Any other comments on this motion? Seeing none, I'll call for a vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 I didn't realize it, but we're there. <laughs> <laughs> I apologize for what I said. <laughs> so, we've got a page. What? And now it's called the comment on? Yes. We're on the part of this meeting where anybody's allowed to raise their hand and talk about a non agenda item. No, you're going to have to start and, and ask your question. Okay. Again. Uh, Jim Berge, Bertrand Road. Um, I understand that Tammy is being <coughs> dismissed. Um, and uh, perhaps a separate agreement has something to do with that. But in any case, um, you know, she's had many years of service, and I think we've all been satisfied with the, her performance as far as getting the minutes out in a timely way. And as far as we know, she's been performing adequately. And uh, whatever the reason is, um, we don't really know, perhaps, but everybody's entitled to a mistake. Uh, I think we've all made mistakes in our lives, and perhaps we haven't been fired for them. Uh, maybe we've been council has to maybe help improve our performance but I think maybe some of these options should have been considered if they weren't 
and perhaps there's still time to do that. That's my comment. Thank, Thank you. you. Any other comments? Yes. Uh, I understand that the supervisors decided to terminate Ms. Stigley. That's correct. Um, when was that decision made? Sorry, I have no idea. I'm sorry, I did. I... When was that decision made? I don't know when was the decision made, Eric. Yeah, I wouldn't comment on that. When was it made that you did that? The Board of Supervisors. Together. Um, Unanimous. Have previous township employees been afforded notice? Um, say, say that again. And an opportunity to be heard. Have previous township employees been afforded notice? You're asking questions. These are, these are personnel are questions. Personnel, personnel matters that we can't comment on. Okay. Um, so, Sarah, she's so got the floor. You, you can't comment on the reason for termination? I would recommend that the board does not comment on that. Who will be replacing Ms. Swaberly? Erica is, plans on running an ad very, very soon. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Sarah. Um, will you be using a advisory committee to help you select the new township secretary as you did with our new township manager? I don't think so. I wouldn't think so. Um, but that's something the board could always jump in if they wanted to. Bernie, how do you feel about that? I have no position in one I think you had a good committee that just, helped you find Erica, so it might be not bad to invest well, the same. It's not how we just for myself. <coughs> I, don't feel, I, don't, I don't feel adequate to hire somebody to know what is needed to fill that position. Certainly, Erica does. Mm -hmm. <coughs> well, we had residents we, help. We used an agency that provided us with 30 or 40 resumes, and the, the committee you're talking about, we did it down to six or eight and the board chose from that six or eight. But in this case, um, I don't think it's necessary for It's a direct report to Eric. Right. I would think that Erica would have. Okay, thank so, you. Yes. Any other comments from the audience? Um, yes. John, I'll uh, get right back to you. Sorry. Tammy Swavely is currently listed as the right to know officer for the township. Um, I'm Tammy, having... <clears throat> Tammy Swavely is currently listed as the right to know officer. To whom would we direct um, right Erica to know Backdorf requests? Erica Backdorf took assume to that Erica? position tonight, yes. Okay. John. That was in the reward. On the last, on the November statement, under in liquid fuels area, there was a number of $233,000 plugged in as income. And I think there's an intent to do something there, but this is a cash basis statement and there was no $233,000. And when the outside auditors come and audit the liquid fuels account, it's going to show a loss of 230000 At this point, that's what's more expensive. Now, I, as far as the financial statements, the monthly report? Yes. The monthly report. The monthly report, the auditor will be fine. The auditor will be fine in, in looking at that. It's, that 233000 was pulled over because we paid for a very large project that had previous year funding and 2016 and 2017 funding. So it will be okay. What was that project? Horseshoe trip. What time? Horseshoe trip. I, I agree that it's fine and I agree with the intent, but to show $233,000, it's probably the only item on that whole 15 pages that's not cash related. And once you start doing that, it opens a big area of trust and mistrust and reason to look at these things. So, yes, I agree that it was last year's income, uh -huh. moved into this year, right. called income again, so it's been called income in two years. There's no cash, which is the only line on here that probably isn't cash. And so I just say there's... Okay. I, just what's going I don't, I don't yeah. understand this. So we have a liquid fuel cash account, a separate yes. account for it. Correct. Okay, last year we didn't use the funds. Right, so and then it would stay in the account. Where would it go? It would go to pay for the invoice. So when looking well, at yes, the expense, but, that, I mean, but it would sit in there until the time that it's expensed. I, I think what we're getting at is that the monthly report, the way that our treasurer puts it together, is she was trying to illustrate that those funds, it, the fund didn't balance unless it 
we had to report $230,000 of the liquid fuels fund had to balance that or else it would be in the negative. Is that correct? That's Tom? correct. Correct. So she took that over and added it and that is that money is physically within the township's account and the invoice went out the door. You see what I mean? So it's a matter of reporting. Okay. But that money is there. It was just showing it that it went out. So. You, you, you have another accounting firm come in prior to the audit, correct? Correct, correct. Can you make sure? They're right here. Sure. Yeah. Right yeah. Definitely, they've yeah. been here already. Yeah. Yeah. And forgive me, but John, this is a hot button for John. Oh, right. you, we, John and I talk, no, we're fine. Good, yeah. I'm asking you, when you go over with them, could you relay whatever their comments are to John? Oh, sure, sure, we'll talk. Yeah, I've been John? pretty busy lately, John, so right. I forgive myself, but yeah. Okay, that help? Yeah, it helps, and I agree all the intent, but the misrepresentation is the only thing I uh, am commenting about. It's, and again, as I commented before, mm -hmm. in the general operating budget, there's 300000 of prior year money. And so when the auditors, if, if you followed that budget and you got audited, you'd have a $300,000 loss. They won't acknowledge mm -hmm. that practice, in my opinion. It's something we'll do. I just want to make sure it's right. That's all I care okay. about. Okay. Any other comments from the audience? Yes. Uh, just uh, sort of an odd question, but I have a hard time hearing you guys back here with just the three mics. I can hear Erica because we're going to hear the space. But you guys turn and talk to each other sometimes, and I, I can't hear any of it. It's a good point. Do you have the physical capability for more mics to put one in front of each other? I looked into that. We do not. Um, there's always <coughs> capability. You're going to have to look into that. It was an $800 addition, I believe, when I had it looked into. Um, not only because of this, but because when they installed the wiring down the columns that these plug into, they're maxed out. But Yeah, yeah, we needed, yeah. So it wasn't just getting another microphone. But he's not the only one that's mentioned it, so yeah, let's, yeah. let's get another number. Of eight. <coughs> Which I'll take. Yes. I just want to go back to Tammy's uh, dismissal. Um, I've worked with her for years, and I thought she was a wonderful township secretary, so I was surprised that she had been dismissed. My concern is just that you have followed proper procedures so you don't open yourself up to um, some kind of lawsuit. Is, if there was adequate warning given and opportunity for her to correct whatever. I won't go into all that, but system. Erica did talk with a, uh, uh, one of our attorneys that's, that handles personnel issues and care to add anything to that? Yeah. Okay, well. I just would like to go on record. She was, in my experience, a great township no. secretary. So I was sad that I was sad. To see Any other? Harry. The other thing about Tammy is that she was currently the person with the best memory, except maybe for Sarah, of things that have gone on in the township, and it's a terrible thing to lose that memory. And so all you people have to keep coming to all these meetings and remembering what happens so that we've got a way to rebuild our history. And I, I'm sorry Tammy's gone because of that particular part of things that she could do that others couldn't. Yes, any other comments? Sarah. Um, did you get a chance to do your road tour and look at that bad spot on Fellowship Road yet? No. We're not scheduled. No. Okay. Have, are you going to schedule it soon or wait till the snow Eric starts? Eric and I talked about that today. Yeah, she's she's got to just pick a date and clear with all three of us. Okay. When you announced the board, you did not announce which of you will be liaisons to each of the committees. Have you made those decisions? We really haven't decided all of them. There's a couple more we have to do. All right. Well, tomorrow at 5 o'clock, would one of you be the liaison to the auditors? Yes. Do you know who it is yet? <laughs> Figure it out. Everybody. I'm just pointing out that at 5.30, there's the EAC. I don't think we ever had one. Well, they've been there. But, okay. and, but at last year. At 5.30, no, there was a, there. there's an EAC at 7.30. So a couple more you could pick out this week. It's okay. Parks and Rec and it's okay. If the yeah. Board of Supervisors isn't there for one meeting, it'll be okay. I it will not be unusual, but 
you know, I've been encouraging you to come. Yes, thank you. Any so, other comments? Sarah. <coughs> There's something here. Um, I've had, a, because of my visibility on some social media, I've had a lot of people asking me what's the process for these appointments they filled out. I know Eric has been terribly busy very recently because she's significantly shorthanded. But what's your process for receiving and reviewing the applications for positions and then selecting people to be appointed to the Applications board? were mentioned here and on the website. We're all funneled through to Erica. Um, I took care of the, uh, app, uh, the application process. David Brown met with Mike and I, I forget the date, but before Christmas, middle of the early part of December, and went over a list of appointments. Um, Bernie was invited to that meeting, but I, is that the meeting he was ill? So, um, and so the appointments were, were decided before Christmas, let's say the 15th, and then we had a meeting with our, um, Bernie and I had a meeting with Erica and our solicitor, uh, and they were reviewed there also, correct? Correct. Um, that was before Bernie was sworn in, and so therefore it was legal to get together, and it was a way to brief him of decisions on those. Um, so how do you, do you separate them by areas of interest or of qualifications? How do you decide who to well, appoint to which? On the form, which? they specify what their interest is. Right, but if somebody could be, you know, interested in one thing and clearly be better for something all, different. I remember that. So, so you don't really look at specific qualifications as they match sure. up to particular committees? Sure, and we're looking for, there's so many different things. We're looking for new blood. I I've mean, heard that phrase so but, many but, times. But you say that, but you just keep one of add the keep the same people on those committees. No, we had a, and we have new people that want to jump on these committees or, or old people. So, um, I I spoke before about the need of what Harriet's just mentioned in terms of the institutional memory in the office. There's also the learning curve in institutional memory on the committees, and so that's well, That's why they're staggered. Yeah. New ones come on every one, two, David three David years. Brown one time said he was on, I think, a one-term planning commission person. He said at the end of the four years, he felt like he was finally getting up to speed. So you you spend four years getting somebody up to speed, and then I you think say, we should, we should make sure that we don't come back people again. learn a little faster than four years. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, think I don't think she's done her. She's my okay. second. I'll trade. I'll share with her. No, no sharing. Just go, go down your list. Let's get them over. Here. Come on. Um, just I, I will leave the questions about process for appointments open in case anybody else in the room has it. And um, I think that's enough for this minute. Okay. If you have any more, you can raise your hand. I will. All right. I've. Um, condensed what I had written out. Um, I think that everyone in, the, in this room who's interested in serving on a committee and has knowledge about what some of the different committees do, you ought to start coming to every one of those meetings so that when there's a vacancy or a term expires, you can say, and you're interested and people will clearly know you're interested because you've been coming to meetings and you'll have a real running start rather than on-the-job training. Harriet, could I just jump in and add something that's at several of our committee meetings, we have people that are not committee members show up every month to uh, those Brian meetings. Brian will be on every single committee and Sarah, meeting. And there's others, so yes, and those people can do things. They don't have to be a committee member and sit up here. You need to, anybody is welcome to join those committees and have an, act, an active participation. Yeah, which makes a good point. That would show devotion to the committee and well, showing up to watch and coming to the meetings. Which is how I got on the Open Space Advisory Committee in the first year because there were two of us who would come to every meeting and when the... And they just assumed you were on the committee. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, but we were. It, it, the, 
other person was Jody Siegel Reinbold, who's now chairman of the Open Space Committee. So we were two who had not been appointed. We all sent in applications for the original Open Space Committee. And I don't know, how many people were there, 10 or 12? And so Jody and I were two who said, we want to come and get informed anyway, so that when people dropped off because it was more work than they thought it was going to be, we were already up to speed on the issues and what they were doing. So it was a very smooth transition. But again, we were part way up on the learning curve. Okay. All right. um, there are so many different kinds of issues that these people have to vote on and deal with. And there's no way they can all have the, all the information they need for these different issues that we don't want all run into every day. They need to have the advice of people from the community. And so it's really important to come out and help and participate and give them some help with that. See, you said she's the nice one. I, I never said that. I just did you. I, I meant it, but I, I never no. said it. <laughs> John, I heard it. John, we, we both heard it. Because That's she's much true. nicer than me. <laughs> Any other comments? Yes. Um, John, I just have one more comment. When um, someone questioned about Tammy, uh, they let go. Uh, they asked who made the decision, and somebody at the table said the supervisors did. That's correct. Did was it a unanimous decision? Say that again. Was it unanimous? I don't believe it was. Okay. What was the vote? I guess two to one, or well, it couldn't have been one to two. <laughs> I just wanted to hear you say that. That's all. She needs your name and address. I'm sorry. My name is Susan Miller, 2573 Horseshoe Trail. Thank you. For Gary, so she's new around here. She's not. She's not too new. <laughs> Any other comments from the audience? Yes. I just want to go back to this education piece and committee uh, volunteers and uh, supervisors. In other townships, there's a push to get um, supervisors, people like planning commission, zoning officers to go through uh, the official Pennsylvania state um, class system, like the PSATs. Uh, courses, the municipal planning courses for planning commissioners. Uh, what What's our position? What's West Vincent Township's position? Do board ma has, has, have board members gone through those courses, the board of supervisors? And are we encouraging planning commissioners to go through those courses, zoning officers? What, what, what's been our position? Well, I, I've attended a few planning commission PSATs courses. Um, I know Mike has attended um, what they call boot camp and the convention and the convention and the Bernie, convention not sure. is not what those are up to date. Yeah, issues, they're just right? separate. But they're not they're, they're not, not classroom. the classroom That's piece. Right. That's not the classroom piece where you learn the laws and you learn right. sort of the parameters mm -hmm. of your position. Right. So that among our group here, no one's gone through that coursework. Uh, well, Bernie, I know you've had many years of experience in another. But I did go to classes prior to becoming a council person. And I've attended two, three, three-week courses put on by key sets. For the planning commission piece. That's correct. Yeah, but not the supervisor piece. I, no, I'm under the impression there's a whole supervisor course load too. This, I'm this, just this is so much fun that I don't know whether you could you could pay me to take a course on. On this. <laughs> okay, well, it, it, it does help to be educated on the parameters of the job. Mm -hmm. Any other comments? Yes. Uh, Eric, I'm Jamie McBricker. Thank you. Uh, this is a question for the solicitor. I'm not asking questions I know the answers to. I'm really just curious. Sunshine, Sunshine Law doesn't cover personnel decisions, <coughs> correct? Are volunteer positions considered personnel decisions? Stop my head, I'm not sure. I think it depends on what committee you're commissioning on appeal. Mm -hmm. Just curious, <coughs> it seems to me it's a kind of thing that there'd be no reason to go into, uh, I forget what you call it, but private pre executive session. Yeah. Executive session, thank you. Um, to talk about when, when names come up to discuss the merits and, and make decisions on what the people who are volunteering. I'm not going to sit here and say I, if my solicitor doesn't know, but uh, Joe McGrory, our the other solicitor um, actually has 
participated in those, and he is pretty sharp on the township, so I can't imagine that it isn't covered um, because of that. Because we rely on him for I I don't know all the statutes and legalities of it. Well, just, I don't mean this the way it sounds, but that's sort of what we have the solicitor for, and he just said he doesn't think it is covered. So there's another so solicitor. That was, that was, I'm the deputy solicitor. Be that as it may. Name um, it seems like it's something that you ought to find out for sure. Because it seems like for volunteer positions, you know, I can understand for personnel where you're talking about <coughs> people and you don't want to talk about an employee in front of people, because these are volunteers. It seems like it just could just be a, a public. I, I completely disagree with when you're talking about personalities, I've heard a previous um, um, board of supervisors say, I would never allow her to take any position on that. And he's almost standing up pointing his finger at me. I don't think that's the type of thing you want out here. But I don't think you want to hear people's true opinion. You, you, you've got to be sensitive to, their, to everybody's personality and whatever. You just couldn't do it in public. You'd go absolutely nowhere. Well, again, I'll go back and just ask you to look up the legalities of it, because if it's not covered that way, then it's not so much a personal decision by you. It's, in fact, a public conversation. Do you want to check with Eric, or should she contact you on that? I, I'd like it on the record. It's not a conversation me and Eric, but for, for on the record. Next meeting. Agenda. We should have an answer on the agenda. Meeting. Okay. Yes, done. Any other comments? Seeing none, I'll call for a vote to end this so meeting. moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, folks, for coming out on a very, very nasty night.